Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting the SWAT rifle miniature for Batman Gotham City Chronicles. Now I don't actually have the in-game concept art for this, but I do have the actual panels that they used to model the miniature after. And there's actually two different panels, but I'm only going to show this one because I think this shows the majority of what I took from it. Uh, mainly the bottom two panels and a little bit of the kind of uh, bottom middle one there. But uh, so if you look at those and kind of the bandaging and, you know, part of the problem here is they're always in a glow from sirens, right? So they're always kind of glowing, um, you know, this red color. But I always try to compare it to Batman because I know Batman's gray and black and then try and just see how they show the glow on him versus the SWAT characters. And that'll kind of derive a lot of my color choices. Additionally, the very bottom right, you can see that that one is blue. Okay, so starting out, as always, I'm going to actually be trimming these. Now, these came to me pre-primed. So these are primed in a little bit of a darker gray than I normally use and uh, not quite trimmed as much as uh, I typically do it. So a little bit of touch up here. Again, I'm not quite sure how the final uh, production miniatures will be when it comes to this. So I imagine it'll be kind of similar. Okay, and starting things off right away a little bit different, I'm using oak brown for the skin. So I'm actually going to be painting darker skin on this miniature. And uh, this is my first time doing this. I think it turned out quite well. I was a little worried. I wasn't quite sure what colors to use that would look good, that you know would look natural, but I think this ended up well. I do miss a bit of the skin where his head is turned. There's a little bit of his neck exposed that I have to paint off camera later. Uh, go ahead and paint that now. And uh, yeah, here it's it's pretty simple. He really just has his arms exposed and his face and a little bit of that neck, like I said, but otherwise pretty quick and simple here. Okay, next up is chocolate brown. So I'm not gonna do any washes on this. Instead, I'm just gonna highlight with a, another brown that is slightly lighter, but again, just slightly. So it'll actually blend in really well. Uh, you gotta be careful sometimes when you need to swap colors in highlighting, especially when you don't mix them, uh, because it won't quite blend as well as you would think. But this is pretty watered down chocolate brown, and it's a, a very close uh, darkness of brown. It's a little bit lighter, and I think it shows up really well as a good highlight. All right, next up is Nuln Oil, and I'm just doing this for the shadow. So I had actually tried, uh, and I didn't even bother showing you, you know, my typical eyes, but they almost look half covered. They're very small, it's hard to get into, and it didn't quite look right. It looked like they didn't have their correct shape, right? Like the helmet was over his eyes. So just put some shadow there and you should be good. Okay, following up with Uniform Gray. This is for all the pants, and this is really the only time uh, besides the basing that I upgrade my brush to a regiment brush. Otherwise, I pretty much do this entire miniature in a character brush, uh, excuse me, a detail brush, and a uh, insane detail brush, uh, just for some, some minor bits, but mostly just a detail brush. But here, this is a big surface area. There's just kind of some bandages, uh, you know, some wrappings that are covering his pants, and you don't have to be too careful because nothing else around here is painted, so go to town and just kind of get the base coat on here quickly. Alright, next up we have Nuln Oil, so we're just going to darken this a little bit as well as get this kind of in the recesses. I would add, I, I would call this a normal application, so it's not really heavy, it's not a light application, it's just kind of how you would, at least how I would normally do it. Okay, once that known oil is dry, make sure to wait for it to dry, I'm going to add some uniform gray. Now this it has not been watered down any more than my original base coat, however it has been a while in my wet palette so it is a little bit more watery. Uh, if you don't have a wet palette that would not have happened, in which case you might want to add a bit more water, but this is not a highlight level uh, water, I am trying to bring the base color close to what it is, uh, or what it was originally.
All right, now I'm adding a little bit of white into that uniform gray to actually create a highlight. So now that we have kind of the shadows, we have the base color, now we're bringing it one step above to the highlight. And notice I'm not putting nearly as much on the miniature. This is mostly a kind of a line highlight. And you might also notice that this looks terrible. Um, I, 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 I was trying to make it a bit more, and this is in quotes, cartoony um, or a comic booky. Right, and really trying to make these highlights pop. Uh, this is a, a crazy amount, but don't worry, I will bring it back and I'll show you exactly what I do. And I actually really like how it turned out. It, it blended pretty well and it did leave me with some higher highlights than I typically do, but I typically paint a little dark. And you know, this is on a dark gray primed miniature anyway, so it's gonna be a little bit darker and I think this really helped pop it out a bit. But either way, it's just a normal highlight. There's a lot of creases and you just kind of trace those creases and call it good. Okay, so uniform grays back out, and this is heavily, heavily watered down. This is, um, uh, I, I saw the term the just the other day online of a European highlighting, and I don't know if that's just a, a kind of a, a commentary on how crazy Europeans are with their miniatures, because they're all about it. They make great ones. They they paint really well. I don't know, um, but it's just extremely watered down, it would, where it would take like three coats just to get a base coat or more. Um, and really what I'm doing here is I'm tracing the highlight and then going just a smidge out of it. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring down that drastic highlight. It won't be quite as bright. And then it'll sh blend it a little bit better. You could think of it kind of like a targeted wash or shade application, but I made my own with the uniform gray. All right, next up is deep blue. Now, um, so you guys, I don't know. Okay, so when I was designing this, again, I just had that co comic book panel to kind of go off of the two that that, that uh, were provided. And, you know, that bottom right one was definitely blue, right? That that uh, that SWAT member. But I also really liked, I didn't want him to be just be this bright blue character, right? Um, and when I think of SWAT, I typically think of like grays and blacks, but that would be really boring if he was all gray and black. And so this allowed me to really have, you know, a, a little bit more color and make this this uh, miniature a bit more fun and unique. And if I just left it at this, I would not be happy with it, right? It would just be blue and gray and that's it. And then maybe a metallic weapon. And so I, I'm gonna add a bit more color to you know some of the pouches and some other things. You, you'll see, and I'll kind of comment on it. But I think in the end, it looks really well and meshes together and looks great. But right now, with just the base coat of the blue, it is really, really bright and uh, probably not something you would necessarily want to keep. Um, he has two gloves, by the way. I forget one of the gloves. I have to go back and get it. The other one that's holding the gun. Uh, he's not just wearing one. That would make no sense. Um, it, but this is a really easy, uh, especially at this level. There's not a whole lot painted, and everything is really well defined. So it, you just get, slap the color on it and call it good. Okay, so Drakenhof Nightshade. Let's go ahead and darken this right now. That'll start making it look a little bit better already. And uh, again, just taking my time because I don't want this blue to get on the gray. And it did. Uh, well, no, it didn't get on the gray. It got on his arm and I had to touch that up uh, off camera. And again, not a big deal. It was quite easy to do um, because I'm not adding any like heavy, heavy layers of this or anything. And it's just a one pass over. So cover all the blue with the blue shade and you should be good. Okay, so deep blue is back out, and this is to bring up a little bit of a highlight. So first there's these little kind of dots, these bumps on his knee guard, so I just want to bring those out a bit. So I'm just going to plop them on there with a little bit of the side of the brush, and then carefully start doing my kind of highlighting. And I am trying to only put this where I feel 
either definition needs to be added, like if something would just curve in like on, on his chest or where his pocket pops out, and then where the, uh, the light would actually, um, you know, shine, especially like on his helmet and his back. All right, next up again, I'm gonna add a little bit of white into that deep blue to create a highlight. This is going to be another heavy highlight, just like it did on the pants. So it's gonna look pretty drastic, but we'll, we'll, we'll make it work pretty well. We'll keep playing with it, and uh, I think it turns out pretty well at the end. Okay, so right here, I'm playing with it a bit more, right? So I haven't changed the color at all. I've watered it down a little bit more, and I'm not really doing the whole tracing thing like I did the last time, but what I am doing is having this kind of watered down bit, and I'm just covering both what I highlighted, because I won't really change it that much, and then out a little bit more, and it just blends it a, a bit more. I'm just It almost gives it a, a shiny quality, which, which I... Uh, really like uh, so it looks more uh, I don't want to say metal or anything like that it just looks more like a, a solid shiny piece as opposed to something that might be super textured all right next up is Abaddon black and I want to do something a little bit different with this gun um, for a few reasons so the details on here are really small and I didn't want to play around with it too much um, it takes, as you can see, just to to um, coat this with the trigger and 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 you know the the piece that he's holding and all that and all the different angles. It takes a while to cover this just in any color, and that's just on its own. Um, so what I'm going to do though, because I wanted it kind of dark, I didn't want something su super shiny. I didn't want to do non-metallic metal or NMM on it, just because there's not really a lot of flat surfaces to work with. It's all kind of these little fiddly bits. So I'm going to color it all in black, and then I'm just going to dry brush a metallic on it. And it, it gives it a, a quick kind of, this is a gun with definition. Um, I, I thought about doing shade, you know, the normal color it all in metallic and then add like Nuln oil to it. But I, I felt it would still be really shiny, and I didn't want that for this miniature. Um, so I, I think it turned out pretty okay, but you know, you, you can be the judge on whether or not you'd want this technique or not. And you could add a bit more detail, so like the site that he's looking up, you could keep that black or something like that. You could add a little bit of uh, detail and a little bit of fiddly bits. Maybe the bottom part's also an accessory in black. I don't know. Uh, that, that's up to you. I just did the whole thing black and the gunmetal. Additionally, on this patch in the back, I'm going to go ahead and paint, uh, paint just the back portion black. And I'm being careful not to put any black if I can help it on the letters because those are going to be a much brighter color. They're going to be white and I'd hate to paint white on black. Okay, now that we got the kind of the buckles that are also black, I went and did the boots as well. So he's going to have black kind of all around. And there's actually two that I get off camera on his legs that I forgot to get. So be sure to grab those buckles as well. 
and then we're going to move right on into highlighting them and that's going to be with a black gray so again i'm just kind of swapping colors here but black gray is a very great I've, I've used it a couple times now to highlight black and i think it works really well it, it blends in super nice in fact you could probably if you wanted him to have like shiny boots like uh, rain boots or something you could highlight it a bit more i was trying to be careful not to highlight this too heavy uh, otherwise it might look again shiny especially with the smooth texture on on the um the front parts and i would think these are more working boots than that Okay, additionally, while I have that black gray out, I'm going to go ahead and he's got like this neck brace kind of, I don't know if it's just the top of his uh, bulletproof vest or what, but I, I did that as well. Okay, so now we have the gunmetal out and I have my small dry brush and I'm just being very careful. Um, again, it's a dry brush, so it's pretty minor and it's it's a nice skinny one. This is the, um, the brush that you get from the... Um, most wanted series that I have linked in my in my description. I use these brushes all the time and this small dry brush is really useful for stuff like this. But this is a quick application. You're just covering the gun with it and as you can see it makes it look metallic but not super shiny. Okay next up I'm gonna actually grab the Abaddon Black again because I forgot I wanted the uh, his sidearm pistol, the holder, to be black. Um, I actually go ahead and then retouch up in the back of the gun uh, at the, on the top and that little line where it goes into the holster I added as black gray instead. Okay, so Bane Blade Brown. This is the next kind of, uh, you know, uh, questionable uh, color choice. Now if, again, if you go back to the concept art, they definitely have a bright brown kind of, you know, one more tan, uh, these kind of straps on them. And, and, and again, I think this, this looks great in the end. It just, when I was first putting it on, cause it's such a bright color and I haven't added any of the other browns. This is really the first brown I'm, I'm using, uh, of, of this kind of brightness on him. It really like it popped out too much. But again, I think in the end, um, save your judgment for then, I think it blends in quite well and looks fairly natural. And it does match the, um, the, the comic panel pretty close. That being said, be careful when you're painting. At this point, a lot of the miniature is painted and you don't want to have to do too many touch-ups. So um, just carefully, you know, use use the detail to your advantage and let it guide the brush and you should be good. All right, so now I'm adding white to it to again create a little bit of a highlight and I'm doing a fairly heavy one and because of how the wrinkles are here and I'm only doing it on these wrinkled kind of wraps, not on the straps that are very um, straight, uh, I'm not worried about blending it at all. I think uh, it just kind of, it, it's raised enough to where it looks good like this. All right, leather brown. Let's get another brown in here, and this is going to be a little bit darker, kind of an in-between uh, of uh, all of the colors. I think it's a very good kind of standard light brown. Uh, and and so, and actually, I think it's my first time using leather brown, which is surprising because I paint a lot of leather, just not leather brown. 
Um, and these I'm only painting on the small bags. I'm going to paint the big bag something different. You could do them all one way or the other. I debated and debated whether these should all be gray or whether they should all be brown, and I went with a mix. Uh, the reason I didn't choose them all gray is because this back portion here, I felt if these were gray on the gray pants, it wouldn't be a good... Um, it, it would... It, it wouldn't look good from tabletop distance, right? I think it would all kind of blend in. So it chose a brown to kind of break up the gray and the blue you see from back here. Okay, now red leather for the holster. If I was to pick this again, I don't know. I'm, I'm conflicted. Uh, as you can tell, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted on a lot of these color choices. I, I like them. This might be a questionable thing. I wanted it to pop out a little bit as the sidearm because I don't think it's very noticeable otherwise. And so I picked a very bright red here and you do notice it from far away uh though you could have picked a more darker color or more natural color uh, maybe something like even rhinox hide or something kind of a really dark leather and touched up i'm not sure uh i added a little bit of white to add a little bit of a highlight but there's not a lot of detail here it's fairly flat so you know it's up to you how much you do here okay agrax earth shade so let's darken up that leather shade a little bit and really add the definition to the pockets so this is going to be a quick application, just kind of run it across there. And I should be too careful, I mean you don't want to like splotch everything else, but if it gets in the cracks it's just like shadow. Okay and black gray is out again, I decided to uh, just keep the black gray, it's one less paint to use. I originally had a, a Mechanicus standard gray here. And uh, I actually wanted a little bit darker. I thought about maybe making it slightly brighter and having this kind of mid gray between the the um, the bright pants and the 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 dark gray I'd already used. But I, I I really liked how this turned out. So and I again, it's one less paint you need. Okay, and again, I'm not going to add a, a wash to this, so I'm just going to, again, add a highlight, so a little bit of white, and this is just to kind of bring out the the kind of pocket, you know, satchel pouch detail stuff. Speaking of which, let's do it over here as well. So here is leather brown again, no white, just kind of bringing it back up to that leather brown. Uh, as you can see with the Agrax or shade, it's a very dark brown wash. So it's going to make it look quite bright and this adds, it, it's not scuff marks, but it makes it look a little bit more worn uh, with this kind of a heavy highlight. Okay, now we're going to bring the white out again and this is to paint in that swat uh, patch that he has in the back. So again, be very careful here. Um, you're touching, you'd be touching up with black, so it's not a huge deal, but this is so finicky, you're going to have to be careful to get a final result, even, even if you have to be careful in your touch up. So. Just take your time and uh, do a good job. <laughs> but the details there, it, it was pretty easy. Alright, let's move on to the base. So let's get some Astro Granite down there. Uh, we're not quite done with the miniature, uh, but I wanted to get this in so it can dry. And again, you just scrape it really uh, finely against the the base. You don't really pile it up. If you want to pile it up, you would get Astro Granite Debris, which is a much thicker one. Um, you wouldn't have to do this on the actual game piece because they came with textured bases unless you want to add it to parts that aren't textured because they have like little details so up to you uh, I had a regular base here for this prototype so this is what I chose to do on it all right next up is known oil so once that dries make sure it's dried or you're gonna mess up everything go ahead and just lather on the or lay on the known oil uh, really heavy this will add a ton of definition to your astro granite and really make a pop. In fact, if you wanted it super dark, you could leave it like this. I think it looks great. While that's drying, I'm taking ash gray and painting the rim. I have not decided because I haven't really read the rules fully enough to really decide how I want to base the allies versus goons versus villains versus, you know, he heroes or anything like that. So right now I'm painting them all ash gray. I'm giving these away to my patrons anyway, and I don't know if they have the game, so this works as a display piece kind of rim anyway. Okay, so the normal is now dry, and now I'm going to take that same ash gray and just dry brush that texture. Now, again, now we have the three tones. We have the base color that comes in, the Nolan Oil shadows, the ash gray. Really makes a pop. Looks fantastic. It's one of my favorite bases because of, of uh, how it looks. 
All right, look at that. We are ready to varnish. This is Citadel's matte varnish. Uh, I typically always varnish in matte. And let's give this away to a patron as a thank you. Uh, so this is open to all of my patrons uh, when I reach certain funding goals, which we're close to another one. That, that one I give away a large miniature to, not just one of these kind of typical size miniatures. Anyway, um, when, when we reach certain goals or milestones, or just every so often, I want to give back. They give so much. I'm always appreciative of it, so uh, this is open to all of them. And uh, to C. I don't know who C is. Um, at this point, you may have guessed. I don't know if there's anybody else with an SE. So this is to Sean Kellogg, who has actually... I think he may have been the uh, first uh, normal viewer uh, to back me. Uh, you know, obviously my wife supports me at a dollar a month. I'm not sure I should read too much into the fact that she only gives me a dollar. Uh, and, uh, you know, just other YouTubers and, and whatnot. But he was, I, I think he may have been my first. Either way, Sean's been uh, supporting me for a long time. I just used a random number generator and went up the list and his number happened to be picked. So that's pretty cool, but a nice little story there. So thanks Sean for your support and thanks everybody else for your support too. Uh, I hope you like this miniature. I hope I don't know if you're getting Batman or not, but uh, let's seal it with a brush on gloss coat. This is from Testers. I'm going to go ahead and link that as well. It's a great gloss coat brush on. I do a lot on armor after a matte varnish works really well and it'll seal that in. And here's the final miniature. This is how he turned out. As you can see, I think the colors turned out really well. I'm actually quite happy with it. Um, again, I was really worried with blues, browns, and grays that he might look a little odd and I wasn't sure about the gun, but I'm quite happy with uh, the way he looks. Um, and you know, these are kind of, they come in a batch of five, so it's not a huge bulk, uh, but there are going to be five of these guys in the game. Um, and I spent a little over two hours painting this one. Some might say that's a lot. I would say that there's enough detail here to where he's his own miniature. And uh, I don't know, I don't like to rush, uh, which is probably why I don't have any games fully painted. Um, but I really enjoy painting, so, you know, why, why waste, why waste it rushing? Anyway, I uh, hope you liked this. I'd like to thank all of my patrons. You can see them going up the list now. I just want to really say thank you to everybody listed here and everybody just otherwise on Patreon or who just view and give your kind comments and words of encouragement. And just this hobby and this community is great and I'm really happy with it. So anyway, that is my painting for the SWAT rifle for Batman Gotham City Chronicles. I'll talk to you guys again soon.